because I do a lot of uh, uh, comparative analysis uh, using the IMG UI and the database. Um, and so then I'll turn it over to Natalia, who will introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Natalia Ivanova. I'm also with RECA at the DGI, Joint Genome Institute. I am also a computational biologist by training. And um, so the next uh, slide is, uh, who is the Joint Genome Institute? Uh, let me see. Okay, I've gone to presentation mode. So uh, we are a US Department of Energy funded uh, research institute. We were uh, founded in 1998 and our first location was in Walnut Creek, California. But just this year, we actually moved on to the uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab campus in Berkeley. Uh, we have approximately 280 staff members. And uh, basically our mission statement is that uh, the Joint Genome Institute is here to serve uh, the worldwide scientific community by enabling access to large scale genomics. So this is um, obviously sequencing. We do a lot of Illumina and PAC biosequencing primarily. Uh, and to provide access to the computational resources and um, other tools that you need to do large comparative analysis of primarily plant genomes uh, and microbial genomes, including fungal genomes. Okay. Um, and um, in terms of our contributions, uh, uh, people submit uh, proposals to the JGI that get peer reviewed and once they're approved, uh, we perform sequencing uh, for DOE mission relevance. Uh, and Department of Energy is interested in topics like bioenergy, biofuels, bioremediation, um, biogeochemical cycles. Uh, and so all of our uh, data is publicly available. Uh, and if you look at the contributions of the JGI compared to all the other sequencing centers and individual labs, uh, you'll see that we have a big piece uh, of the pie, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, microbial genomes uh, and environmental metagenomes, uh, as well as fungal genomes. So all of this data is um, generated and provided freely through various data portals. Um, for, fung uh, for plant genomes in particular, for those that are not familiar, we have phytosome. Uh, we have microcosm uh, that addresses fungal genomes. So this is not just a database of those genomes, but also tools that allow you to do some kind of analysis. And then, of course, today we're going to talk about IMG, uh, which houses um, uh, both isolate genomes as well as uncultivated genomes or environmental metagenomic samples. And we're going to look at how we can uh, search through that data set. Um, we also have other portals that I'm not mentioning here. We have Phycocosm that's dedicated for algal genomes. And we also have something called Genome Portals, uh, which is where you would go if you want to download all these data sets, either individually or in bulk. And uh, we do have a webinar next week that addresses uh, that particular question. Okay. So uh, hopefully everybody's got a registered account. Uh, we had instructions in the email as well uh, that if you didn't have an account, you would uh, need to set up this single sign-out account. And that would then give you access to the IMG MER. Uh, ER stands for Expert Review. And uh, the idea is that um, if you have access to the site, um, you can have some additional functionality that you can't get in our public site that doesn't require registration. So there is a site called IMGM without the ER. So whatever URL you have, if you just take out the ER and just use IMGM, um, you can still do a lot of the things I'm gonna to demonstrate today on the UI. But if you want access to additional capabilities like the ability to submit your own data uh, for annotation or some additional um, comparative analysis tools and functionality, in this workspace, then you would need to have a registered account with us and you would need to log into IMG MER. And you know you're logged into IMG MER when you have sort of this logout button. So um, what is the IMG system? It is uh, not 
merely a, a repository for all these JGI as well as public data sets. It's also a data management system that provides a lot of uh, tools for comparative analysis and hopefully allows the user to get from sequence to biology. And uh, if you come to our landing page, you'll see a number of stats. Uh, so this one on the left that I'm highlighting here enumerates the number of data sets that we have for um, uh, these types of uh, sequence entities. So bacterial genomes, we have uh, the total number that was generated by the JGI sequencing projects and then the total. And so these include data sets that come from GenBank and other uh, public uh, resources and sometimes even user submitted data um, uh, that's been made, made public. And so our objective today is to search through these various data sets uh, using the underlying metadata. Um, I should also point out, so obviously everybody understands bacterial, archaeal genomes and so on. We have viral genomes, including viral um, fractions, uh, sorry, viral genome fractions that are predicted uh, through computational methodologies uh, in a separate data mart called IMGVR. Uh, and then we have a number of uh, environmental data sets uh, like metagenomes uh, and metatranscriptomes and other entities. So, um, okay, there we go. Uh, so all of this data can be browsed with a number of different types of metadata. When you think of metadata, you probably think of things like environmental metadata, um, you know, where a particular sample was um, isolated from, maybe it came from a bioreactor sample, maybe it came from a human oral sample, or you might think of the um, conditions for sampling um, if you're looking at, at metagenomic data. Um, and uh, that's one of the categories of metadata would be environmental metadata or physical chemical metadata, but uh, it can also be the underlying uh, sequencing attributes and methodologies that are used, okay? So we're gonna look at some examples in the UI that use some of these different metadata fields. All of this metadata is sourced from uh, a separate database called the Genomes Online Database. And uh, again, I shared a link uh, in the invitation email that um, um, directs you to their help pages if you want to learn more about how that data is um, managed and curated for individual sequencing projects. But the main take home from this slide and the next slide uh, is relevant to the examples that I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. Uh, the one is this concept that everything is nested under an overarching study name, right? So let's say you submitted um, a proposal that got accepted at the JGI and um, um, you requested uh, multiple metagenomic sequencing, metatranscriptome sequencing, maybe you had some cultivated isolates that you submitted for sequencing. All of this would come under an umbrella name and this is the study name. Right, and then under the study name, nested under the study name, you have uh, the environmental samples, if you're looking at metagenomes or metatranscriptomes, for example, or you have uh, the genome name, if you're looking at an isolate, a name like Coxiella burdetti or Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, so just uh, be aware. I'm not gonna belabor uh, all of the other details on this slide. Uh, in three weeks, uh, we have a webinar that talks about how to submit your data. Uh, to Gold and IMG, and uh, uh, some of this stuff will be um, uh, covered in some more detail uh, at that in, uh, during that webinar. Uh, the second sort of relevant piece of metadata uh, that I just want to introduce to you, since I'll be using it in the demo, uh, is uh, pertaining to environmental metadata. I hope everybody um, looked at some of the instructions that were in the email that was sent. There is a Google document that was shared with you that has a lot of these gold and IMG specific terms and their definitions. Um, and uh, hopefully that'll serve as a guide. If you have questions, of course, uh, feel free to either put it in the, sh in the, in the chat um, um, or you can even contact us at a later time point. Okay, so for environmental metadata, uh, there are sort of these levels of classifications and these categories start with ecosystem, right? And generally it's a contra controlled vocabulary. 
So you have three general options. So let's say you have uh, samples from, I don't know, 1,000 meters depths from the Sargasso Sea, right? So you have marine samples. Um, you would put that under ecosystem would be environmental as opposed to engineered or host associated. And then the next level would be ecosystem category, and that would be aquatic, and then so on. So hopefully you get this hierarchy, right? So it's aquatic, it's marine, it's oceanic as opposed to coastal or um, something like that. Uh, and then it's part of the aphotic zone, right? There's no light. Um, okay, so those are the um, um, two sort of metadata concepts that I wanted to introduce. And then uh, at this point, I'm gonna transition uh, to the UI so that we can demo some search examples. Uh, again, a link to the advanced search builder was provided to you in the email. So you can click on that uh, if you want to follow along or if you're just watching the webinar, uh, that's fine as well. Um, again, as I mentioned, if you have a registered account, that link will work for you. But if you do not have a registered account, you probably just want to delete where it says MER in the UI, you just want to delete uh, ER. Uh, and I'm going to transition over to the, uh, uh, the UI and Natalia, at this point, I'm going to pause and ask you if there are any questions. Nothing, nothing, basically. I am responding to the questions uh, if they come in real time, but nothing that you need to address immediately. Nothing for, okay, nothing for overall consumption. Okay. Um, Okay, so as I was saying before, all you would have to do if you didn't have access to the uh, password secured site is change this from uh, M E R to M. Okay, but I'm going to stay on E R. Um, and to go to the advanced search builder, all you would have to do is navigate from find genomes to genome search. Okay, so I have this preloaded. Um, and you just tab over to the advanced search builder right over here. Okay, first thing is we do have sort of a, a help doc. So if you click on this little notebook over here, it'll pop up a new window. It, it has a PDF document, and that has sort of the basic operations of this page. Um, and and I, I think a, a, a few examples as well. At the very top of this page, you have some tips on how to do the searches. Like for example, you can do regular expression searches, or you can use mathematical operators uh, and search uh, across different available metadata fields. And then I'm coming down further. And uh, this menu down here shows you the different metadata categories that are available to you to search across. Okay, um, So taxonomy should be obvious to everybody. Uh, you can also search with identifiers. Um, and then I'm going to use some, not all of these examples, but some of these examples today. Uh, you can submit, you know, you can search across samples by when they were added. Um, you know, maybe you want to look at newer samples versus older samples, the assembly methodology, um, the sequencing methodology, and so on. And then you have these other categories. Environmental classification is what I just uh, sort of highlighted to you in the slide um, to sort of make you familiar with this concept. Uh, you have obviously the data set names, uh, cultivation metadata um geographic and otherwise right so you have multiple uh and it's not possible obviously to look at all of these uh at once but um and then you have the genome statistics metadata which i myself use very frequently when i'm doing a search okay so uh let's get down to it um so for the demo i have two examples one is an example of a um uh, isolate genome search and one is a metagenome search and I'm going to start with the isolate genomes okay so so my my hypothetical backstory on on uh, what I'm doing here is I have uh, cultivated and brought into isolation three new um, uh, three new bacterial isolates that I got from garden soil okay and so I probably shook off some roots and I had a sample and I cultivated that and I have isolates, and then I did some 16S typing, and they all came back as Brady rhizobium species. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, the advanced search builder to find appropriate additional Brady rhizobial genomes for comparative genomics purposes. Okay, um, so how do we do that? The first thing you do is you add the new builder line. 
right? And the default is taxonomy. And um, if you pull this down, you can see all the other metadata categories that are shown here, right? So I'm just gonna go with my genus name, which I know it's a Brady rhizobium species. And I'm gonna pull down this one and go to genus. And I'm simply typing Brady rhizobium, okay? Now at this point, I can hit search, and this will take me to search table, okay? So what it says up top is that there were 233 search results. And as I come down, uh, I have a table. All of these um, columns are uh, sortable and searchable, okay? For searching them, all you would do is pick the column header, and again, do some kind of regular expression, partial text search. Um, so I have a number of identifiers that have shown up. I have my sort of genome size, so I can filter by any of these. Okay, so when I filter this, immediately I have, I see, I see a problem, right? I have uh, this genome, these genomes over here that only have about 300 um, coding sequences. Uh, whereas if you know something about Brady rhizobium, you know these genomes are much larger, okay? Um, so the question is what happened here? I wanted Brady rhizobial isolates, uh, but what I have actually are both isolates as well as other types of entities. Uh, so these, uh, based on the study name, I can tell that these are single cells, right? It says rhizosphere, grand challenge, single cell genomes. Um, you might also have metagenome assembled genomes, or you might have genome fragments, right? And I don't want, I don't want all these. I don't want all these. I just want something that I know is cultivated. So what I would do at this point is I would go back uh, to my advanced search builder and try to devise a better search that gets to where I need to go, right? So I'm going to go back to my genome search. Sorry, it's taking a, a second to load. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is show you an additional feature that's actually very useful when you're just doing sort of an exploration to begin with, right? So I searched for Brady rhizobium, I got 233 genomes, but they're not all isolates. Uh, now what I can do is I can sort of reload my search. So every time you do a search, uh, there's a, a, his, a search history that'll last, um, I think for your session. And all you can do, all you have to do, especially if you've done a com more complex query, you hit reconstruct query, and that then reloads your query window, right? So it's pulled back what I did before. So I don't want, I do not want um, things that have not been cultivated. I want to do a comparative genomics with good high quality genomes. Um, and I want them all to be isolated genomes. I don't want to have single cells, you know, that generally tend to be, tend to have very low completion rates. I don't want metagenome assembled genomes um, uh, for whatever reason. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to another cultivation metadata, another metadata category. This one is called cultivation metadata. Okay. You click on that and I'm going to select the very first option says culture type. And I have two available to me, co-culture or isolate. Isolate sounds good. So I'm going to say isolate. At this point, I can again hit search, but instead you can sort of see what you get <clears throat> um, uh, when you use different parameters. So I'm going to hit evaluate query here. And what this is going to do is it's just going to give me what my counts are going to be from that search, right? So uh, if you look at what returned, uh, what it's saying is there are 233 <clears throat> counts of um, genomes. Uh, with the genus Brady rhizobium. Uh, and then there's about 83,000 counts um, under the field culture type like isolate, okay? And the union of, of both of these is 218. So I have 218 Brady rhizobial isolates and that effectively takes care of removing those single cells uh, that I was worried about uh, from before. Okay, so I'm not gonna hit search here, but I'm gonna show you some additional functionality. Um, as I said, um, <clears throat> you can have um, uh, genomes that are highly fragmentary and maybe you don't want to use those. So sometimes when you look at these genomes, they'll say they have 5,000 plus 
uh, assembled uh, scaffolds, right? So generally when you want, you want the highest quality genome, you know, we like to think of finished genomes as those that have uh, a single assembly or a single scaffold uh, that corresponds to the chromosome. Maybe there's a few more for plasmids, but the state of the, state of the affair is that we have very fragmentary uh, or highly fragmented genomes. And so you can see genomes that have over a thousand scaffolds. And so maybe what I want to do is I want to limit, um, I want to limit these isolate genomes to some better quality genomes. I want to get rid of genomes that are very fragmentary in nature. So I would do that by, again, using the uh, metadata category for genome statistics metadata, for example. Okay, um, I think that's right. And so here you have options like genome size, uh, gene count, and I'm interested in scaffold count, right? I want to have genomes that are um, less than a thousand pieces or less than 500 pieces. I'm gonna go with an arbitrary number. So I only want genomes that, have, that are in fewer than 500 pieces, right? Fewer than 500 scaffolds. Think about putting a jigsaw piece, uh, you know, like a 10,000 jigsaw piece puzzle together and, um, you know, you have all these fragments uh, and, and the assumption is also there's a lot of um, um, sequencing gaps. So, you know, this is sort of up to you. It's kind of arbitrary, but I'm going to go with less than 500 and I can evaluate this query again. Okay. Uh, may I interrupt for a moment? There are a few people who are asking why they see fewer genomes than you do. Ah, okay. Excellent question. Um, so I am um, considered a, um, a super user, which means that I have access to a lot of public data sets. I'm sorry, private data sets that have not been released to the public yet. I hope that clarifies it. Um, yes, you will see different numbers of counts uh, based on the data sets that you have access to, right? So if you have um, a project with the JGI and you have a number of private data sets, your counts would be different from somebody else's counts. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Um, so um, I introduced this new filter. I wanted genomes, isolate genomes that, were, that had fewer than 500 pieces. Now that number has diminished to 194, okay? So uh, the next uh, sort of setup for this is let's say that I'm only interested, since I have uh, these isolates that came from garden soil, I'm only interested really in any Brady rhizobial isolates uh, that were cultivated from, uh, from a plant associated environment, okay? I don't want anything that maybe came out of a bioreactor. I don't want anything that came out of a marine sample. I specifically want to do my comparisons with isolates uh, that originated from a plant environment. So how do I do that? This is where the environmental metadata uh, becomes um, useful. So I've pulled down a new builder line and I'm doing environmental classification, okay? And um, as I pointed out before, this is hierarchy of environmental classification where you start with this ecosystem, which is very high level, right? And this is the controlled vocabulary terms. You could go to something like ecosystem category and you could search for plants in here. Um, so you could hit plants and you could do an evaluate query, right? And you could do this uh, at the next level down, uh, which gives you a number of other types of options. Um, you could also do something like habitat. Um, I guess the one thing that I forgot to mention is sort of these this five level ecosystem uh, category descriptions were really uh, made to accommodate uh, environmental samples for metagenomic sequencing and such. Uh, so for a lot of isolate genomes, there's a lot more information within this habitat field. Now this doesn't have a controlled vocabulary, so it's free text, right? So um, what I would then do is do free text over here. So I could say plants or LC plant. Everything that you type in here is a partial search. Um, and of course, you know, people have different ways of describing things. It's all, man all manners of synonyms are possible. So I could say rhizosphere, right? Lots of people have, um, have rhizosphere isolates and rhizosphere metagenomes. So I could say rhizosphere, but then they might specify that it's rhizoplane. Um, 
So I could just say rhizo and leave it at that. Uh, phylo meaning leaf, right? Uh, and then you can see I've auto-completed here all the different things that I could think of, right? In, in relationship to Brady rhizobium. Brady rhizobium are uh, well-known nodulators of uh, leguminous plants. So I have all the terms that I could think of, which is plant, rhizosphere, rhizoplane, phylosphere, stem, nodule. And I'm gonna hit evaluate query again. And what it's gonna do is it's going to go through all my parameters and it's gonna search uh, only through the habitat category and see how many I'm left with that have been associated with any of these search terms. So out of my you know, 208 or oh, 195 possibilities, only 33 have some information within this field for habitat. Now, as I go across every field, I might get slightly different numbers because uh, some of the data is going to be more sparse in some of these categories, uh, and it's going to be more enriched in other categories. So instead of looking at all of these individually, uh, I would just use any field. So I could search across all of those environmental classification categories with the same, with the same search terms, and I'm gonna reevaluate that query. All right, I'm keeping an eye on time. Um, and so the, um, the long and the short of it, once this page loads, and perhaps a lot of you all are quick clicking along with me, I hope not, um, is that you'll see actually a lot more uh, Brady rhizobium, isolate genomes, fewer than 500 fragments that are associated with any of those terms across all the metadata categories. Okay, so now I have 85, 85, uh, Brady rhizobial isolates that originate from a plant. So now I'm, I'm kind of happy with this subselection and I hit search and I have a table uh, that will regenerate itself. And the one thing that I wanted to um, tell you about this table, if you've never used IMG before, uh, and Natalia likes to say this uh, when we have our uh, workshops, is that all the good stuff is at the bottom of the page. So, okay, so my table is loaded. So it says 85, sorry, 85 uh, genomes are loaded. And uh, you've seen this before. The good stuff, as we said before, is at the bottom. And this is what we mean by good stuff. Uh, you can reconfigure the display fields or the display columns uh, over here uh, at the bottom using any of these uh, metadata category, right? So. We have isolate genomes. Um, well, we know that everything is less than 500, um, 500 uh, scaffolds. Uh, maybe I want to see the GC percentages. Um, um, I want to see the host name, okay? So we selected everything that came from a plant or from the rhizosphere or the phylosphere. Um, and I want to see if there's any host names associated with that. So I'm just gonna redisplay the table above. And okay, so it's now pulled up host name and it's pulled up scaffold count. Okay, so you can see here, there are many that have a single scaffold and at the higher end, it should be no more than 500. Okay, so 497. Um, if you sort by this column host name, uh, you'll see that many of them actually have um, the Latin name for the host that they were isolated from shown. Um, I don't know the, uh, the common name for a lot of these, but I do know the common name for this one, which is soybean, right? So these are all Brady Rhizobium japonicum strains that have all been isolated from Glycine Max, which is a soybean, right? So there's, there's a number of those. Uh, you can also sort this table. So let's say, let's say that's a subset that I want to do uh, further work with. So I just see glycine max or glycine and I hit apply and I select that. So we have 14 Brady rhizobium isolate genomes that are associated with the plant glycine max or soybean. At this point, I would add these to my genome cart. Okay. And my genome cart went from zero to 14. So 14 genomes are now in my cart. Once things are in your cart, you can start using uh, some of the comparative analysis tools. Um, I know a lot of y'all have questions about using the comparative tools, uh, but I'm afraid we're going to have to cover those in upcoming webinars. Uh, this one is dedicated to uh, how to use the, uh, the metadata fields in the advanced search builder. Uh, so I'm not gonna go there now, but there are um, 
uh, a lot of comparative tools that you can do uh, that you can use. Um, I guess the other um, um, okay, let's just go back to the advanced search builder in the uh, uh, interest of time. Natalia, any questions? No general questions, kind of, not of general interest kind of questions. Okay. So uh, the only kind of maybe comment is that several people asked uh, of, uh, about finding specific genes or specific pea farms or other types of protein families. And that would be not an advanced genome search, it will be an advanced gene search. So you yeah. may want to. I think, uh, I think we'll, at this point, we'll say please stay tuned for additional webinars. Um, I, did, I did share um, uh, sort of a document that says please um, uh, provide your, your specific search examples for, for data sets. And I've seen that a lot of the examples here are actually uh, more about what you can do with those genomes, um, uh, what kind of comparative genomics you can do or uh, what you can do with, uh, with the functional content. So we'll address those offline. Uh, but since we're doing the advanced search builder, let's go back to that. I have one more example that I'd like to demo and we can, um, um, and then open it up to sort of, you know, uh, more specific questions or, um, or we'll just see how it goes uh, when, my, when my time is up. Okay, so uh, continuing on with this, this question of uh, my Brady rhizobium. Okay, so I've, I've come to this point where I had 13 uh, other glycine max host associated Brady rhizobial genomes. I've done some comparative genomics. Now I'm turning my eye to metagenomic data sets. Okay, so we're interested now, or my, my question is, I'm interested in seeing whether there are any uh, metagenomic or metatranscriptomic data sets available from that particular host. So we come back here, we add the new builder line. Now we're not really interested in taxonomy and all the taxonomic levels. We're really interested in only these uncultivated microbiome samples, all right? Now the thing to understand about this is again, it, it's not restricted to metagenomes that also contains metatranscriptomes. Uh, we have these um, particle sorts, uh, cell enrichments, combined assemblies. There's, uh, there's a number of different entities in here. If you want to restrict your search only to metagenomes or only to metatranscriptomes or what have you, um, you can use. Um, there's a number of different ways of going about it. Um, one of the methods would be to go to sequencing assembly and annotation, right? I don't think I've shown you this yet. Um, so you can you know, find things based on the date they were introduced, uh, assembly methodology and stuff. Um, but for this particular exercise, I'm interested in metagenomes and not metatranscriptomes or single particle sorts or anything like that. So I just pulled down JGI analysis project type and I hit metagenome analysis. Okay, and what this will effectively do is restrict my microbiome um, samples to metagenome analysis. It will not return the other possibilities, which would be combined assemblies, metagenome cell enrichment, metagenome single particle sort, or metatranscriptome analysis. Or you can also do, I should also point out that if you use the command or control button, you can also um, multi click. Okay, so I'm going to select combined assembly and metagenome analysis. If you don't know what a combined assembly is, I encourage you to look at the uh, terms and definitions document uh, to see what we're talking about. Okay, so at this point I can evaluate the query and it'll tell me um, what, uh, what I'm at home to find. Okay, actually this is not the exercise. The exercise is we're interested in finding glycine max samples. So I'm sorry about that. I'm going to actually go to study data sets names at this point. And I'm going to search for glycine max or soybean, right? So again, you need to be aware that there are cinnamon synonyms. It could be soybean. There could be a space between soy and bean. Um, uh, and glycine, gly, glycine max is of course a Latin name for soybean. And I could search under just the sample name, right? Or I could search under the overarching study name. Uh, or I could search across both fields, right? So this is what I wanted to do. I want to see uh, combined assemblies of metagenomes and metagenomes associated with study data set names soybean or glycine max, and I hit evaluate query. And that should give me a count 
of, oh, I only got two. I only got two metagenomes uh, that are associated with these names. Um, and JGI analysis product type. Okay. So I am going to add one more. I'm going to add metatranscriptome analysis to my search. So I modify my search to include metatranscriptomes, metagenomes, and combined assemblies. And I'm going to hit evaluate query. And um, <clears throat> okay, so now I have 16 data sets. So clearly the majority of um, microbiome samples that we have are metatranscriptomes that have been generated from soybean, right? Now let's say I want to whittle this list down. Um, I only want samples that were all generated using a particular sequencing methodology, right? I mean, especially if you're looking at metagenomic samples, uh, especially for marine samples, you know, if you start with, think about the global ocean sampling days, there was a lot of Sanger sequencing, there was 454, Selexa sequencing. Um, there are many reviews talking about the pitfalls of uh, all the different variables uh, from experimental methodologies that can affect downstream analysis. Um, so maybe you want to restrict this um, to sequencing technology uh, like Illumina, right? So you say sequencing assembly annotation, sorry, not sequencing status, sequencing method is Illumina. And we hit evaluate query. Um, so hopefully you all get the, uh, the general operation of the tool and that you can add these sort of builder lines and evaluate and refine your search uh, okay, I did something wrong. I guess I lost, <laughs> I lost, I lost my soybean count. Um, so let's go back. Study data set names across both samples. Word. Okay, hit the rally query. Uh, you can build up to five builder lines in total. Um, and you can save, if you're gonna, if you spend some time crafting the perfect um, advanced search query, you can serve those, save those for later in your workspace. Okay, so I have five, 15 microbiome samples, including metagenomes, uh, metatranscriptomes uh, that originate from the soybean, that were sequenced using Illumina, and I'm satisfied with this, and I'm going to go and retrieve uh, those particular samples, and I can add these to my cart. I can look at additional pieces of metadata associated with them. Maybe I don't want, um, again, genomes that are too small. Perhaps there wasn't enough sequencing that, that was done. Um, so you can use all the additional metadata categories at the bottom of the page, and reconfigure the table. And, um, ah, okay, <laughs> I didn't want to point this out, right? So I did my search, my keyword search, I did it across both study name and the sample name. And so what it's done at the end of the day is it's actually pulled back, not just soybean, it's pulled back corn. So this says microbial communities from rhizosphere soil from corn. And we wanted soybean. The reason this has come back is because the overarching study name says it's microbial communities of corn and soybean from Ohio, USA, right? So you can see immediately that uh, uh, we like to say that there's a lot of janitorial work involved in uh, curating your data set, especially when you're doing uh, large comparisons. And so this is part of that effort. So uh, in this case, I could just simply um, filter this table to get rid of the corn uh, by searching across the sample name instead, right? So use sample name. And so we don't have corn anymore, we just have soybean samples. Okay, so this is something to keep in mind. Uh, you always have to do uh, a lot of verification to make sure that um, um, the data set is exactly what you're after, okay? And it also showing you here that these are all primarily, meta they're all metatranscriptomes, right? 
Okay, I'm going to pause here again and I'm going to ask, are there any questions? Uh, no, nothing again of a general interest. It's basically, so there is the question that may be of general interest. It is about whether the genomes in ING, all of them are in gene bank as well. So, and the answer is uh, no. Um, basically, as I uh, said, uh, ING includes JGI generated genomes and also the genomes that we download from gene bank and also private submissions. So, for the JGI generated genomes, we have a mandate to submit the data to gene bank, and we do so with the exception of single cell genomes and metagenome assembled genomes. Uh, for some reasons, uh, gene bank does like our uh, single cells and metagenome assembled genomes. So, for the private submissions, uh, it depends on the submitter. Basically, we generate the annotation, and uh, you can download the annotated, the annotated genome from IMG or from data genome portal. But we do not provide assistance with submitting the data to gene bank. That's all. Okay. So, um, at this point, um, <clears throat> if there are no specific search um, questions that people have, I can um, sort of um, keep going. I have, it's, it's, I have 14 minutes left, so I can, um, um, if there, I'm just waiting to see if anybody has a specific search query to, that we can demo, or I can, talk about some additional functionality. So I'm just, I'm pausing here to see if we have any questions specific to the use of the advanced search builder. Uh, hopefully it was clear. Um, I know there's a lot of terminology and uh, it, it was gonna take some patience to sort of learn uh, what the, uh, what all those terms are. Um, I guess the one thing that I would point out to you is um, we do have this new feature called the public list. And so if anybody wants, you know, you've forgotten, we're going to send you a recording of this webinar, but if you've forgotten what I did, uh, if you go to this public list, uh, this is the query that I did for the Brady rhizobial isolates, okay? So it's saying that I searched for Brady rhizobium, number of scaffolds less than 500, uh, isolate genomes, and then the search terms. And what you can do is you go to their public list and you add it to your history cart, right? So if I say add selected to history cart, uh, that'll take you to the advanced search builder page and you can just hit reconstruct query and it auto loads my query for you. And our intention is to use this public list um, to um, sort of give you more, um, um, sort of uh, expose the tricks of the trade, so to speak. Um, and so I think we're working on sort of a document that's called tools and tricks for, you know, finding appropriate uh, genomes uh, for comparative purposes. And um, so as I said, so now it's loaded the, the public list and all you would do is you would select this and you would say reconstruct query and it would auto populate those fields for you. And then you can modify this as you wish. Uh, so we are going to have some other examples, and we're working on a document that will have uh, some of these more advanced queries. Okay. Uh, so the question was again about to repeat the uh, query with the scaffold count. Uh, I assume with the kind of with the motivation of why exactly you want to limit it and uh, to repeat the query. The number of scaffolds. Okay. Um, all right. So let me get rid of these. And get rid of, all right. So this is what the question was. Uh, why did I choose 500? Okay, so um, we have we have this. Okay, let's just, you know let's just pull that up. Uh, we have um, um, the sort of status of the genome. Uh, so if you think of the old uh, finished genomes of the Sanger days, where you would have uh, uh, you know all the sequencing and physical gaps were figured out, and you had one contiguous assembly for your genome and perhaps it's plasmids you would have what we would what we refer to as a finished genome okay uh but um since then uh people have been producing a lot of draft genomes okay draft genome assemblies and so these um 
have are of varying quality due to a number of different reasons. It depends on the sequencing technology that was used, how many repeats the genome has. And so these, by definition, are going to be not the same quality as a finished genome. It could be equivalent quality, but in some cases it could be poorer quality. And so some of the ways that we assess the quality of the genome, maybe all have heard of CHECK-M, uh, which is a tool to assess completion and contamination of a genome. It's very pertinent when people are looking at metagenome assembled genomes, which is sort of these genome equivalents that are derived from metagenomic samples. Um, um, so we don't have CHECK-M implemented as of yet uh, in IMG, but what we do is we use other things as proxies. So one of those proxies for myself is something like scaffold count, right? So if I see a scaff, you know, scaffold count is one, that looks pretty good to me. Um, that's what I want to see. And maybe these are finished genomes. You see they're finished, but there's also permanent draft genomes. So they're feeling uh, pretty secure that they had a good genome, even though they didn't go to the effort of, um, oh, in this case, it assembled perfectly. So they didn't have to do any primer walking or figure out how to close all the gaps. Uh, but then at the other end of the spectrum, and here I've subselected for 500 and fewer scaffolds. The thing is, if I have a thousand scaffolds, and sometimes you'll even see 2,000 scaffolds, that says to me that a lot more work needs to be done. Uh, maybe more sequencing needs to be done, but you need to reassess the assemblies and that the chances are that you'll have a lot of fragmentary genes, right? You have a thousand assemblies, there's going to be partial genes, there's going to be sequencing gaps, physical gaps. So the more pieces your isolate genome is in, uh, the more wary you should be. Uh, there are other kinds of metrics that we use, like um, I like to use coding density. Um, typically coding density is roughly 90%. And if you see things that are sort of outliers, uh, it might talk to uh, issues with how um, gene finding uh, might have worked. Um, this is a problem sometimes with IGC genomes. Um, Natalia, do you have anything else to add? Uh, so there was a question about the the useful uh, tricks about the um, the regular expressions in the both in the builder and the in the filtering of the table. So. Okay. So. Uh oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Anyway, so basically, we will test uh, an advanced uh, an advanced example about this. Uh, so we will be basically IMG accepts the uh, ranges in the search builder. IMG can uh, accept uh, accepts uh, ranges uh, such as ten to fifteen or ten to one hundred. So, uh, and also in the filtering of the results table, there is this option of regular expression filtering where you can use total regular expression. I don't know if you want to demo anything. Sure. Okay. Um, was the question about the mathematical operators in particular or? Yes, it's basically it's uh, so it's kind of it's the uh, different ways of how ING allows you to use OR essentially, right? Which is the comma separated list or selecting all fields. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll go over that again. So, so the first thing is when you have something like this with the controlled vocabulary, you can pick select one. You can multi-select using command or control if you're on a PC, right? Um, you could do something like that. Oh, let's say I want, I'm interested in archaea and bacteria. And um, let's say I'm only interested in finished genomes. I will go to sequencing status and I'm selecting only finished genome. Mm -hmm. okay, I do that. Or maybe I'm interested in finished and permanent draft, which sort of implies that uh, people felt, uh, uh, they weren't going to do any more uh, efforts to improve the quality of that draft. Um, you could do that. Um, you could go to 
the date range, right? You could say, so you would enter it exactly like this. You're only interested in samples that uh, were produced in the last two months. I don't know if this is useful. Um, so 2020, zero one, zero one, two, 14, which is today. I know for those of you all that are joining us from, uh, okay, there we go, uh, there we go. So you could do that. Is that, I don't know if that was the intention. Um, let's see, what else can we do? We can do comma searches, right? So we could go to something like, um, well, I, I already demonstrated the, the comma searches with the, the environmental, metadata search, right? So you could go any field. We're only interested in archaea that are, I don't know, thermophiles. We'll just say thermo. Thermophil. Thermophile, thermophilic. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, Natalia, do you have any, uh, any other thoughts about this? And then mathematical operators. I'm just going to, I'm going to stick with thermo over here. And then I'm going to go with um, genome statistics metadata. And I want the genome size to be definitely greater than 2 million base pairs. OK. Uh, two, two, one, two, three. OK, and I'm going to hit evaluate quiz. Is that, I, I hope that was helpful. And that's what was intended out of curiosity. Oh, we got zero counts. We did not uh -oh. like the word thermophile for some reason. Uh -oh. So I guess uh, oh. that, that's. Oh, the thermophiles are small. Let's try one million base pairs. Mm. Oh, I have one too many zeros. Sorry. That's the Lango presenter, yeah. Anyway, Rekha, I think that, yeah, that's uh, very, uh, I think that, that's, anyway, so basically, so I think that we should say about the contact pass the, so that people can submit additional questions through the GFU, right? Um, oh, yes. Okay. So, yeah, this is the last three minutes. All right. So this is what I have to say. Uh, we are going to send out a survey. Uh, we're going to send out. Um, uh, we're going to send out a survey, and we'd really like um, your assistance in sort of like helping us uh, sort of crystallize this format. This is the first time we've done this, and we have three more planned, and a lot of you all are registered for those. Uh, but we'd also be very curious about what other topics, in particular, you would like to see covered with these webinars. Um, I also want to draw your attention to the. Um, uh, live MGM workshops that we host here twice a year uh, at Berkeley Lab. And uh, the upcoming one is from September 28th to October 2. So it's kind of a hands-on immersive experience here. Uh, we work with um, real world examples and do a lot of comparative analysis. We work in groups. Um, so you get a lot more out of this because it's a completely immersive experience with all of the data sets, the tools, and uh, a lot of the scientists that are here at the JGR that are available to ask, you know, sort of help answer your questions. Um, so I encourage you to, um, um, to register for that sooner than later. We have limited number of spots and they tend to sort of uh, fill up early. Uh, and then the last thing that I would like to leave you with is if you have, um, we will, you know, we're going to send you a survey. The survey is going, that email is also going to have a chat transcript. And it's, um, I'll provide a link to the MGM workshop. Um, you can really help us out by telling us what additional topics you're interested in. Uh, if you have questions for us, uh, you can use, uh oh, okay, I need to move this. You can click on contact us. And what this does is it puts your request into a JIRA queue, which means that we will answer and get to it eventually, sooner than later. Um, uh, for the folks that submitted some questions in this 
your genome search examples from the IMG webinar. Uh, some of these were not really relevant to this particular topic, but I will uh, certainly respond to you um, individually, okay? So that brings us to the end of the hour. And um, we're looking forward to hearing some of your feedback. And uh, we're also looking forward to uh, seeing you guys uh, for the next one, which is next Tuesday. Okay, so any more questions? So, many people are asking whether this is being recorded and whether it will be posted. And the answer is yes to both. Okay. Again, so the last comment is we encourage you, if you want uh, to know more, to find out how to do additional analysis, please respond to the survey. If you don't, you won't know what uh, people are interested in. Right. So if you go to our webinar series at the moment, uh, you guys know this already. We have the next upcoming topic is IMG data export and download. And that's going to introduce you to genome portals, which is where uh, uh, all of the export happens. Um, the one after that is uh, dedicated for metagenome assembled bins that we have as a new future, new feature in IMG. And then the last one is how to submit your assemblies for annotation uh, by putting your sample metadata in gold and then submitting your assemblies to IMG. And then we had these additional topics in mind, and I'm going to send you a survey asking you know which of these are most interesting and what additional ones you would like to see. So if we have no more questions, I think I think we will um, we will end here. Yes, I think so. So thank you everybody for attending. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>